Good morning. Um, as uh, our panelists get seated, uh, I'm the uh, president and co-founder of a company that connects the, uh, the dozens of executives to the uh, thousands or, or tens of thousands of life sciences professionals who run clinical trials, apropos to the, the last panel, that then connect to hundreds of thousands of um, healthcare professionals that then connect to millions of patients. And, uh, and one of the theories that we have is, uh, although potentially technology has helped us kind of turn that downward spiral towards the incline, we've made things less worse than they were before in terms of productivity for pharma, can we take all that information that's bouncing around amongst all those different people and use these ideas around big data to actually make that productivity curve go back up? to create real insights that, that make people behave differently than they have in the past. Now, that, that's just about life sciences, um, certainly in my world. Uh, but we've got a fantastic panel here of people who think about this and act on these big data ideas in the much bigger world of healthcare. Um, so actually, uh, uh, Harlan has, uh, has been the architect of, of uh, an outcome measure used by, by Medicare. I mean, it, maybe you could uh, start us off with some examples or an example of how big data thinking um, has the potential to really impact the way we think about patient care. Yeah, I, I think we wanted to start off positive. Big data, you, you know, you see the name of this panel. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But one of the questions is, to what degree has big data helped us to improve what we really care about, which is the end of results of care for patients? I'm a cardiologist and have worked uh, quite extensively with the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association and professionals around the country thinking about how we can make use of data that are available. And just want to give one quick example. And, and also to say, I think we're just in the first half of the first inning here. I mean, we're, when we talk about big data, we are just beginning to scratch the surface on this. But you go back about 10 years and really no clear insight into any sort of the performance metrics that we would care a lot about. Like, if you had a heart attack, how quickly would you be treated at the hospital? How are hospitals doing with that? And when we finally start getting some data, granular data at the hospital level, we recognize that at some places, you might sit for two and a half hours before an emergency procedure might be performed that could save your life. And we know that every minute counts. So each one of those minutes uh, was adding to your risk, and many people were dying unnecessarily because of the delays. By being able to focus on the data, understanding the patterns around the country, isolating who was doing it best, then digging in and understanding what were their processes, how did they achieve that top performance? and then generalizing it in a kind of good to great mode where you say now we, we've looked at hundreds, thousands, thousand hospitals around the country and we've figured out the top 20. What are they doing? Spread it. We've gone from a situation where the average times were oh, just about two hours. Someone would come in the emergency room with an emergency heart attack, needed immediate procedure. In the median time, half the people would be treated under, under two hours. We're down to a place now where uh, ninety percent of people are treated within ninety minutes, which is at least our recommendation. But in many places around the country, they're breaking the hour mark, a time that they thought impossible before. Would have been uh, impossible for us to appreciate that it was uh, what the current levels of performance were or how we got to better levels. So while there's much more to do, this is an example of where we're driving down. You see overall um, uh, mortality rates, death rates from heart attacks in this country dropped twenty five percent in a period where we've looked very much at this and other other areas of, uh, of performance. So the, it's a great example. Um, Peter, you, you're chief medical officer of Verizon. You've clearly got your hands around a lot of data. You have a similar uh, victory example for uh, big data for us? Yeah, you'd, uh, you know, you'd imagine um, Verizon, big company, lots of cell phones, lots of uh, circuits. Uh, you know, 70% of the traffic that goes anywhere in the earth to anywhere else on the earth on the internet goes through something that Verizon owns or manages. But we, uh, we tried to apply a couple of things. To, for example, in the fraud world, 70, the Institute of Medicine claims that $70 billion of, uh, of the cost of medicine is fraud. Uh, just the Medicare and, and congressional testimony claims it's in that range. Uh, we applied a fraud management program that looks at billions of records a, you know, a month. Uh, we, we, we instrumented the back the routers on the internet in uh, 20,000 places around the world and just gather the log data from there. That's a terabyte per router per day. And we now create a naughty or nice list for every IP address on the planet uh, that's updated every four minutes. Uh, so if somebody's done harm to someone else and we can keep track of scoring of how that works, 
that can influence the uh, nation. I mean, after all, good big data isn't about what you could do with small amounts of data in small places. It's about what you get better by taking massive amounts of data to tease out you know, the needles in the, in the haystack. Okay, so, so Andy's got a, a massive amount of data around healthcare, right? You manage the, the services platform for the United Health Group. Um, so so what's, the, what's the promise of the naughty or nice list look like for you guys? It's Christmas, you know, we gotta go for it. <laughs> You know, I, I think we ought to start looking at this question by looking at what is our relationship to data and healthcare, big, small, or otherwise. You know, most healthcare executives would tell you that they can't get access or meaning out of their own data, and they don't trust anyone else's data. So we have this kind of um, situation where, and I think on top of that, probably most importantly, um, we are overwhelming the kind of uh, precious care resources in our community with all kinds of information and all kinds of compliance and all kinds of uh, new things. And we tend to go in healthcare from way under engineering an opportunity to way over engineering an opportunity. And so this whole kind of big data phenomenon I think has um, some uh, real potential if it simplifies our lives, gets the right answer to people, solves really acute problems like Harold was talking about. But I think there's also uh, a, an element of um, of overinvestment. Go out there. Two, two. Store up here and see. If we can see. So, uh, actually, as you talked about uh, data quality, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it, I don't know if everybody saw this, but there was an island um, that actually had to be wiped out of Google Maps because it doesn't actually exist. Um, the reason it was there is because some whaler went by and thought that there was. Some, surf action going on and, and so you know garbage in garbage out certainly applies to big data and and i think one of the key sources of information has to be in healthcare patients right we're supposed to be creating this ecosystem around them but is there an inherent trust relationship i'm actually thinking about you know what, what you've done you're taking this patient care and you're, you're trying to optimize it um, yet you have people who have an inherent uh, uh, I think standoffishness when they hear that their information is going to be incorporated into a big well, study. I think, uh, first of all, I mean, I did have this feeling like the naughty or nice on the terabytes of data, and I'm just wondering who's being identified and what exactly is being done with the data. And I think that kind of sense gives people chills when they worry about exactly whose data and what it's being done with. I'm sure you're doing it with the best intentions, but uh, it just what worries me. The question, you know, I've told you, Glenn, that. Uh, no amount of good analytics is going to overcome the limitations of really dirty data that's being directed for questions that it's not appropriate to answer with that level of granularity, with that level of sophistication in the data. And ultimately, I do think that what we need to know is what patients are experiencing in the healthcare system so that we can understand what results are really being achieved. And we can, that's the only way we're going to really understand value. Because we're very sophisticated in understanding costs, but we're not very un, uh, sophisticated in understanding the outputs of our system and whether we're really matching the needs of patients and aligning our strategies to their preferences and values and goals and seeing their function and feelings and, and quality of life as well as their mortality and healthcare utilization. But I, I think it comes back to whether they're getting something back for it. So there is this issue of trust, but it's also one for them of personal value. Are you using this information about me to make my life easier and better? And how is this going to translate into something in the future for me? Now, I think I'll come back to this theme. The very best solutions, including businesses, startups, anything you have is solving a problem that we individually can get our arms around and experience and say that's important. And if we knew that the information was coming together for something that I, I was going to make me feel that I was getting better information at the point of making decisions, or I was getting better, better information was come back to my doctors and healthcare system so that the next time I came, my visit would go smoother and that the information flow would be better and that my life wouldn't have to be filling out another form that it seems like I filled out 15 times before. Or that I was being judged as a clinician uh, with data that I felt was unfair. Then I think you would find people to be more willing to see it. Now, you'd still have to have all of the protections so that people felt safe. But the safety by itself isn't, to me, going to be sufficient unless people can drive a value. This is meaningful to me. And the idea of all the data, I think what we need to key on is that. And, and I think patients will want to give that kind of information if they're part of that process.